guys, I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnett, and welcome to my channel. So because I'm not doing my plant hauls every month anymore, I needed space to fill. I decided to do this fun series on things you should know to keep your plants alive. So it's going to be a playlist on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos on tips and tricks that I've learned about having plants, things that I've researched and learned along the way, and also just basic knowledge on what you should do when you have a plant and how to keep it alive. A lot of these topics are going to be kind of basic, but a lot of times when doing research for any of these videos or even when I write blogs, I learn so many things. I've learned things that I didn't think of or just kind of fun tips and tricks or little facts along the way. So I wanted to share all those with you guys. So for today's what you should know to keep your plants alive, we're going to talk about environment which to me, I feel like is the most important thing. You have to make sure that the environment is suitable for that plant. So with environment today, we're gonna to be talking about lighting, humidity, and temperature. Three very important things to make your plants super happy in your home, which will in turn make you happy. So let's get started and let's start off by talking about lighting. Lighting. Probably the most important thing you have to consider when you get a new plant or when you have plants. You wanna make sure that that lighting is ideal for that plant. I will say this for this category and every category in this video, I will keep repeating it. My number one rule for all three is to make sure you research your plants. Make sure you do a quick Google search on that plant and seeing what lighting requirements they need. Now, I will go over some tips and tricks because I know that there's some confusion on what exactly indirect medium light is. Give you a little trick on how to determine which lighting you have. Let's talk about the three types of lighting. There's low light, medium light or indirect light, and then there's bright or direct light. I will throw in no light as well. So those are going to be like lower than low light, but we'll get into that in just a minute. So lighting, of course, is the most important thing for your plants. When you're trying to grow plants, lighting is very important and making sure you have the right lighting requirements for that plant is going to benefit that plant in the long run. Plants, take that sunlight and absorb it and put it into energy. Coupled with your fertilizing, you're gonna have no problem having new growth and new leaves on your plants constantly. That is a very, very important thing you'll wanna consider when you're placing your plants or buying a new plant is to just make sure that you put it in the right lighting. Now, again, I know that there's some confusion on what lighting is what, so let me break it down for you guys. Bright and direct light is going to be your sunny areas. Anywhere that the plant is going to get actually sun rays hitting the foliage. So this is going to be ideal for your desert plants, your succulents, and even Hoyas. So the way that you can determine whether you have bright direct light other than seeing the sun visibly shining on your plants is that it will cast a hard shadow on your walls. This is an example of a bright direct light. I actually took out my flashlight camera to show you guys what that mimics. It's a really hard definitive line on the wall so you'll be able to perfectly map out the shape of the leaf. If you have medium to indirect light, this is going to be maybe your plants get a little sprinkled with like dappled light. I would still consider medium light. So I have some plants that kind of get light filtered through other plants and I would say consider that more of a medium light. Medium light is really basically the gold standard. It's really for any plant. When in doubt, put your plant in medium light. It's going to be the best and ideal for really any plant. The only ones I wouldn't suggest would be a desert plant, but a desert plant will survive in medium light. Just maybe would put it closer to a window just to make sure it gets a little bit more light. So for medium light, it will cast a shadow. It will might be slightly blurry, a little bit faded, but you'll still be able to see the leaf shape, but it's not going to be as a solid shadow as it would be in direct light and low light. A lot of people get confused with low light as no light or, oh, I have a really dark 
area in my kitchen that doesn't get any natural light, that's where I'm gonna put the plant. I would never suggest you put a plant in an area that they can't, like think of the plant if it had eyes. Would it be able to look out the window in any capacity? If it can't, then I would move it to another area. Low light doesn't mean no light. For low light, low light plants are going to be your pothos and your snake plant. Those can do okay in low light. Obviously, if you give them brighter light, pothos do enjoy brighter light, so doesn't a snake plant. I really don't love low light. I know that I kind of promote low light plants in some videos, but I don't typically love it. Your plants are not going to grow as good as they would if you were to put it in a medium light. You may notice some other growth, or even notice that they're starting to stretch, which is kind of an elongated stem. So you wanna make sure that you keep an eye on your plant and just see how they're doing. But to determine a lower light setting, you're gonna see a very blurry, maybe faded shadow on a lower light plant. And for no light, I'll throw that in here and I will just tell you if you have a place a room that has no light, I would suggest to get a grow light. But if you do not want to get a grow light and you're like, I just, you know, I want my office room, I just want to plant in it, then I would suggest to get a fake plant. I know, very taboo of me to say, but if you have no light, your plants are going to struggle. They're not gonna survive, they're not gonna thrive, they're not gonna do well in a no light setting. Plants need light to live. They need light, they need to absorb that sunlight. Make sure that your plants get some light to some capacity. Now, which brings me into my tip and trick. So you can get a grow light. You can get a grow light, a small little ring light that plugs right into a USB that can basically stake right into the planter and will give light to just one plant. You can also get a lamp that kind of faces down. I have a lamp in my plant room that in the fall and winter, I switch out the regular bulb to a grow light bulb. And I leave that on and it just gives my plants just that little extra light. As you can see, I don't have a grow light bulb in it right now because we are now in spring and summer and I'm starting to notice more light getting to those plants. But in this fall and winter, I never get any light, not even a little sprinkle. So those plants start to get a little sad. So I put a grow light in that lamp just to make sure they get a little added light. I also have this diagram which will show you basically a window that shines into a little room that I made and it shows you kind of an idea of what lighting looks like in your room. That's available for download. If you want to download it, I'll have the link in the description. If you'd like to keep it for your personal reference. So the next thing I wanna talk about in environment is humidity. Humidity is also another very important factor when you have houseplants. Your plants are going to thrive if you give it the amount of humidity, for the most part, in their natural environment. And I will say again, Research your plants. Make sure the plants that you're getting are not going to be super humid loving if you're not going to want to accommodate that plant. So for instance, your Calitheas and Alocasias are going to be more humid loving plants like a pothos or even some philodendrons do okay with lower humidity. And also you can always get a desert plant if you don't wanna give it any humidity. When in doubt, for any of your plants, keep your home humidity around 40 to 60%. Now I know that's kind of a broad range. Some plants do fine in 40%, some plants do fine in 60%. You'll wanna make sure that you accommodate your plants in a certain way. So getting a humidifier and putting that near a plant that needs more humidity and letting it sprinkle over the plants that might do okay without as much humidity getting blasted on them, you'll want to make sure that you can kind of arrange them in that certain way. I know that my plant room, a lot of you guys love how aesthetic it is, but there is a method to my madness, kind of on the top shelf where the humidifier will blanket over those plants and those are going to get the most humidity where the plants on the bottom shelves are gonna get a little bit of humidity, but not as much. So a trick that I do when I have a plant that is super needy and it needs a lot of humidity, I get a geranium. So those geraniums are going to be able to basically create a little dome of humidity for that one single plant. So I have for one of my imports, that sits in like, it looks like kind of like a cookie jar, but Michael said it was a geranium. 
So I got that and that plan is doing great. I also have a Calathea White Fusion that sits in a fish bowl. So I took a fish bowl, my fish wound up dying, and I put the fish bowl upside down. That plant never needs to be watered and it does great. It just does so good in that terrarium. That is an option that you can do if you have a plant that is just not loving your home humidity and you don't want to live in a rainforest. You can do that as an option. That Calathea, for instance, I have tried to put it next to a humidifier and just try to let it adapt and it absolutely hates it. It will not live anywhere except that fishbowl terranium. It just lives in that terranium and that's it. Like it, it does not like anything else. And I've even put my hygrometer in there and it is uh, definitely humid in there. I think it got up to like 85, 90. So it's pretty humid. <laughs> so here are some common misconceptions when it comes to humidity. These are going to be a little bit controversial. Some people, might do this and if it works well for you great this is just the facts misting does not help your plants with humidity yes i will say it does help it in that moment when you're missing your plants and the water is dropping all over and stuff it's technically doing what a humidifier does in a bigger sense when a humidifier blasts into the air it gives it tiny little particles that really kind of form into the air that causes humidity. Because you're misting your plants, it's kind of dropping onto your plants. And yes, it does increase the humidity, but once that dries, that plant is gonna go right back into the regular humidity that it had before. So unless you're constantly misting your plants, which I do not recommend, but unless you're constantly misting your plants, you're not going to raise that humidity for a long period of time. It's just a very temporary thing. Misting can be beneficial to your plants. You can give it a little mist or a little rinse off and your plants will thank you for it. They love it, especially if you're going to wipe the leaves and get rid of any of the dust and debris that may have built up on the leaves. They will love it. Trust me, it's okay. But also make sure that your airflow is up when you do that so the water doesn't stay on the leaves that can cause mildew and fungal issues on your leaves and you don't want that. Another thing that I've been hearing a lot about humidity is using pebble trays. I was a culprit of doing this for a long time. I would put my Calitheas on pebble trays and it does work. Now, the, basically the way that pebble trays are supposed to work is you take a, uh, I use like plates from the dollar store, but you take these plates you put rocks on the bottom and you fill the plate up to halfway up the rocks, or maybe you just basically don't want water to be able to get through the drainage hole because you don't want the plant to be soaking up that water. What the idea is, is it's supposed to evaporate and cause and create a kind of a an invisible terranium. It doesn't work. It does wind up evaporating but only a few inches off of the plant nine out of ten times you're really only giving humidity to your planter and not the actual plant unless you have a really small plant you're not going to give it any humidity the way you can use a pebble tray is if you take the fishbowl or your terranium and you put the pebble tray either inside or you put like the fishbowl over the top that can help increase humidity for your plant but really i mean not without encasing it it's not going to really do anything if you don't have a terranium and you don't have a humidifier one thing you can do that's a temporary fix is you can group your plants together so i've noticed on my plant shelf that is on the opposite end of my southeast window gets a lot more humid according to my hygrometer than the plants on the other side in my southeast window. Now the sun could play a factor in kind of drying that out a little bit more but it is like 10% more humid on the other side and I think it's because I do have a lot more plants on those shelves. Essentially what it's going to do is when you water your plants you have water in the soil. The soil moisture is going to evaporate eventually and what Essentially, this is going to do is it's going to, if you group all the plants together, it's going to kind of bounce off of each other. Now, this isn't going to boost your humidity a ton. This is going to boost it just a little bit, and it's going to be 
I would suggest more of a temporary fix. Now this is a personal preference, but I don't really like to let my plants touch just because it can cause pests to kind of travel around, but you can group them all together and just do it temporarily. I have been told as well that if you do pebble trays and grouping, that that also can help as a temporary fix as well, which makes sense because if it's evaporating to a certain extent, then maybe it will get to your plants. Not 100% sure about that. And for temperature. This is really for any plant. You're going to want to make sure that if you're comfortable, they're comfortable. I've said that several times on this channel. I keep saying it because it's true. Plants are living things. The average home temp is 68 to 76 degrees. Your houseplants average temperature that they like to be in is 65 to 75 degrees. Both us and plants like to live in the same temperate environment. So that works out really well if you have houseplants. It kind of takes the guesswork out of it, I guess. But if your plants go below 50 degrees, and this goes for basically all plants, for an extended period of time, you're gonna look into a lot of issues and potentially the death of your plant. Now, there's been few nights where last winter, my plants or my house got down to like 55-ish. After that happened, I wound up putting my heat on like 60, just so like if it got down below 60, it would kick on. But there were a couple nights that I just didn't know it was gonna get that cold and it got down to like 50s, even 40s-ish in my house. Now my plants were okay because it only happened a few times. It wasn't in a constant 50 or below degree temperature. So it didn't really cause damage to them, but they're not gonna be happy. They're not going to love that at all. So you wanna make sure that you keep your temperature around that 65 to 75 degrees. Now plants can also survive up to 85 to 90 degrees. Some plants like your cactuses and succulents can withstand higher temperatures, even Hoyas. Really any plant that can hold a lot of moisture in the foliage, in the leaves, can live a little bit longer than a plant that has a thinner leaf. You wanna make sure that if you keep your plants in like a sunny spot, to make sure that they're not overheating. I know a plant doesn't really overheat, but you can cause the foliage to burn on the leaves. So you wanna make sure that the sun isn't like overheating your plants and causing too much damage onto the foliage. So really with both temperature and humidity, you should get a hygrometer. These things are going to take the guesswork out of really all of it. I have two of these in my plant room. I have one on each side. I actually have humidifiers on each side. So basically if the humidity in my plant room drops below 50%, I throw those humidifiers on. This also was the thing that told me that the plants were in an area that was around 50 degrees which i knew wasn't going to be ideal for them i have these listed in my amazon shop you can get a hygrometer they're like six to seven dollars they're very inexpensive and they last a long time i mean i've had at least one of these for got i it's got to be going on like three years and i think the other one i had for two years i just had one at the at one point and then i was like i probably need two for each side so i wound up getting another one but these are going to be lifesavers and again take the guesswork out of doing all of that so like i said get a hygrometer this is going to really 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 help you with the temperature and humidity so that's it those are the Really, I feel like I wanted to start off with this video because I felt like environment is one of the number one biggest things that is going to help your plant survive. I know that when you get a house plant that I have said, other people have said, you want to try to mimic that environment as much as possible as like their natural environment. We're not going to be living in a rainforest. We're not going to be living in an area that is going to be super uncomfortable to us because a plant would love it if the house was like 60 plus percent humidity and like 80 degrees, but that's not comfortable for us. We also want to be comfortable in our homes too. 
So we kind of have to try to coexist in that sense. I hope some of these tips and tricks helped you out, especially with the lighting. I actually learned a lot about the shadow things so that I want to try out a little bit more with my plants. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about environment or anything like that. And also if you have any tips that I kind of left out for humidity, temperature, or lighting, let me know. But that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.